Um, so what I do here is, is, is I start out with these, this is two mil foam, tan and, and brown. Um, you can time in different colors like an olive and tan, olive and uh, chartreuse, chartreuse and olive, depending on which, which way you want it. Uh, the cool thing is that you can tie them with tan on bottom, brown on top, or if you want, you know, brown on bottom, tan on front, on top, whatever you are trying to match up with. Um, again, it's just limited by foam colors that you can get your hands on. Um, I always tie mine tan on bottom, and that's probably what I fish with probably 90, 95% of the time is tan. Um, you can tie black and black, and that, that works fine. Um, orange and black works good, too. Um, Again, yellows. Um, problem with the foams is that sometimes they're 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 yellow. It's so yellow, you know. You want to you might have to hit it with a marker or something to kind of tame it down a little bit. Um, but what I do is I use um, these. I get the foam sheets and I use the cutter cutters. Um, do you have cutters? Yeah. The the ones I use I use uh, River Road Creations the uh, tapered Chernobyl cutters. Um, you can. You can use hopper bodies. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the the same, you know. Um, same on top and bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one here. This is the round, the round one, and those work just as fine. Um, the, this is the Chernobyl tapered end mm -hmm. that I use. But again, the main thing that you're using is for um, using it for consistency. It's, I mean, if you want to sit there and cut with scissors, you can do that, but. If you buy one of these things, just stamp them out, and it's a heck of a lot easier. Um, so, and my wife told me to bring my cutters with me to show you guys how to do it, and I didn't listen to her. And <laughs> they're at home, and so you'll have to. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, you know, it'd be, it probably is a good idea, but you know. So, um, so I, what I do is I just crank out a bunch of these, and, and um, sometimes if I can do it with double sheets with a brown and tan, I can do that that way. You know my times, um, less time doing it. So when I do that, what I do is a two X long hook. Two um, X. This is a light wire two X long hook. So the same hook that you'd be tying like Copper Johns on. Um, this one's a size eight. Um, I tie mine sixes, eights, tens, and some twelves. Um, but I fish eights a lot of times because that'll hold up you know pretty good chunk of, of tungsten and lead and wire. Um, so I start off by centering this with that hook gap and then the, the, the center of the foam piece there. Um, and then I just pierce it right through. So this is my bottom. And um, most of these, the, the gl glossy back betas, the hopper, um, those two have videos on my, my blog. They're in HD. So you can watch those step by step um, in high def. Um, the ice merger has a photo tutorial. Um, the floss back, I have one done, but I just don't have it posted. Um, and then what else did I do? The 719 beta, so I got to do one on that. But um, that way, you, if you want to tie these later and, and you know you don't remember, or, or do you post these too on? on yeah. Okay. Um, we'll throw a link up with them. Okay. That way you can kind of follow along. Um, so I, I'm using uh, UT, uh, UTC 140 tan thread on this. A um, little bit more, a um, little more hair that I got to lash down. A few things I got to lash down. So what I do is just kind of start and put a few wraps of, of uh, um, thread down just to kind of get a base. I'll untwist a little bit, swing this guy underneath, and then place them so that your first wrap is right above the barb. One, two, and three, just to kind of snug up. Okay, and then I use super glue on every almost every step um, you can fish I mean you can fish these flies almost all summer same one as long as it you know stays together I just put a little dab right there just to kind of hold them together lay this one to match up right there okay one snug two snug three snug okay so that's um, that's your first step what I do um, is I usually tie them in with two tail or two legs like that. Um, what I'm going to do here is just use four legs, um, and they're just going to be brown. So you you can look that at that one for that style. But this one I'm going to have um, 
kind of like an Amy's aunt, I guess, has kind of the same thing. Um, so I already have pre-cut brown legs. The difference between legs, the legging materials, and I also have some, these are kind of cool, these are crazy, uh, sexy legs, speckled. New from Montana Fly. Those ones, the barring on them does not come off, but you have to tie them in just right, otherwise they'll kind of shrink up, and I'm not shrink up, but close up on each other, so it doesn't really have a good look to it. This is the round rubber that comes in the, the like hairline or Wopsy has it, the long package where it's folded up and it's, it's yeah, yeah, you peel them off. And for me, it seems like these ones are um, um, a little easier to work with because, um, especially on the back end here, if I tied in another piece of, of um, that material or any other um, barred leg like this, they tend to close up because they're a little thinner and they're, I don't know what it is, but it, it just closes up. So, yeah, yeah, no, ma no matter how, how much I put on it, you know, mm -hmm. if I loosen it, they still, they may open up just a little bit. But these ones here, um, these brown rubber legs, they, they, uh, they seem to have the right um, splay in them, I guess you can say. So just tie What's those in. So you can see that that already, that's what I'm looking for on those back legs. I don't want them just to be like a single leg. Okay. So I, once I do that, I sneak up here, kind of on the middle there, on, so on the hook you shank. Said, and why do you decide to put an extra pair of legs on there? You don't have to. I mean, it's just, you know, if you want more rubber legs, it, I don't okay. think it hurts. Um, okay. You know. It's, so it's just a whim? Yeah, oh. yeah. Normally, like I said, on this, on, on that back first section, I just leave it, and I don't put legs back there. Um, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so if you want more legs, you can you can certainly add them. And then you got to decide over here on this fly. Okay, I'm going to start back here on the barb, and I got to end up right here. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of break it up, like you know, with with into fourths. So I got one back there. This next one's going to be here. The next one's going to be up here. Okay. You don't want to have to come out, and a lot of people have a lot of trouble with this fly because they'll put the next one right here, segment here, and then the next one here. And that just kind of closes on that upper third. It kind of scrunches everything. So that's something that most people have trouble with. So even I have trouble with it sometimes. I'll tie them and I'll be like, crap, that one, that one um, spacing didn't come out very well. So once I tie that bottom, I just put a little bit of glue, not too much, in that little pocket. If I didn't use glue, so I got all that foam wrapped around a round shank and it just wants to spin on me. Okay, and then I come back here. Now I got to decide, okay, where's my, um, where am I going to put this next segment? I don't want to put too far up. So I put three. Another thing with this thread that I, I like using because it lays flat. When I wrap it flat, it's wider. If it stays round like a uni, when I crank down on it, it tends to shear it off, that foam, shear right through it. Huh. Um, and that's kind of one of those problems I had up front that I realized, like, oh, I can't use uni. You can, it, it'll work, but, you know, one out of every so many flies that you tie um, ends up, you have to strip it or get rid of it because you, uh, because you um, shear it off the foam, you know, you start thinking about different options. Okay, so again, just lay that down. Now this segment here, you want to make the least amount of wraps because that's where everything's going to end up. Okay. Now this one here, this segment, this last segment, this is kind of the one that gave me fits because I had to figure out what to do with that foam. So I usually use micro tip scissors on this this part here. I've never tried it with these scissors, so we'll see how it works because those micro tips are so. Actually, I, I do have some. Um, micro tips are a lot thinner than any um, razor scissors. And it allows me to get, you know, these aren't even the right ones. It allows me to get um, in there um, a little bit better. And I come in, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. I come in and as far as I can, just clip that. And then I got those little nubs, what I call nubs. Just come in here, clip those a little bit. And this is, um, again, uh, depending on how clean you want this fly to look, I, I designed it to be pretty clean. 